Hey, what's up guys? Joel Adams with Iridesium and I am back with the Blender 2.8 Pro Tips course and we are going to be taking a look at Sculpt Mode. So in the last video we looked at modifiers and before that we looked at Edit Mode. Um, so I figured it's time to go over Sculpt Mode. Sculpt Mode in Blender is not super powerful. It's not as developed as Edit Mode but it's pretty good and I do use it quite a bit, so it's a good time to cover it. What you're gonna use sculpt mode for is organic shapes. So in sculpt mode, you're not gonna be able to get hard surface shapes very easily, although some people do. What you're gonna do in sculpt mode is get organic shapes. So you're gonna sculpt a rock or you're gonna sculpt a person or an animal. You're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna model a car or a building in sculpt mode. That just doesn't make any sense. So with that out of the way, let's jump right in and get started. I'm going to load up a new scene in Blender. I'm going to go File, New, and instead of clicking on General, I'm going to click on Sculpting. So you can see that loads a completely different interface, and your object is now bright red. The reason it's red is because it has a matte cap applied. If we go up here to these four icons, which switch between your shading modes, I can click on this little drop down and you can see under lighting that we've got a matte cap applied instead of a studio. Um, not the greatest matte cap in my opinion, but whatever, we'll just go with it. So if I go ahead and click on this sphere and then drag, you can see we're drawing on the surface of it and it's manipulating the geometry. If you hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see that First of all, there's a lot of vertices, edges, and faces. Your mesh is very high resolution the geometry has now been displaced. It has been moved outwards. We are not editing the individual vertices, edges, and faces directly like we would in edit mode, but we are editing them indirectly and creating this new mesh um, in sculpt mode. So going over the interface, you can see that we've got all of our tools right here on the left. Uh, if you hover over them, it says what they are. This is draw, this is clay, clay strips. And then at the top, we've got a few options. We've got radius, um, that's just the size of the brush, and then strength, that's how strong the brush is, um, how much it's gonna move your geometry out. Then you've got a plus and minus button. If you click on the minus, what it's gonna do is default left click is going to subtract instead of add. So yeah, that's, I guess, hopefully obvious. If you click on this little icon that says active tool and workspace settings, it's going to give you a bunch of settings for sculpt mode. So this tab, Active Tool and Workspace Settings, is always available. If you're in object mode, it's there. It doesn't have much under it. And in edit mode, it also doesn't have a whole lot under it. But in sculpt mode, it's packed full. So you've got uh, radius, strength, direction. Again, you've got some auto smooth, which I find kind of annoying, but whatever. Um, you've got some options here for how your stroke is going to affect the mesh. And then you've got a few other things down here. The one I want to focus on for now is symmetry and din topo, dynamic topology. So let's go over symmetry first. So right here, the first option, which is I think the only one you'll probably ever end up using, mirror. So X is on right now, and you can see that your object is automatically mirroring along the X axis. So if you sculpt on this side, it's also sculpting on that side. If you check Y, it will mirror along both axes, as you can see there, and Z would mirror along uh, all three, just like that. So then the next drop down I want to go over is dynamic topology. So go ahead and click on this little box. It's going to add a check mark, and you can see that we can now look at the geometry of our sphere, and it's a bunch of little triangles. If you hit tab to go into edit mode, you can see that your geometry has all been turned into triangles, and it's kind of a mess. Um, unfortunately, that's just what you get for using dynamic topology. You'll have to retopologize your mesh later, so uh, trace over it with clean geometry. But for now, I think it's fine to use dynamic topology. Basically, what dynamic topology is going to do is, if you're far away, it's going to add less detail, and then when you're close up, it's going to add more detail. So that's like the super basics, and you'll probably forget most of what I said just there. So let's do a project. Let's sculpt something. I'm going to go File, New, General, 
and load up a new startup file hit X to delete those and I'm gonna go object and sculpt mode and we've got our plain cube switch your properties panel to the active tool and workspace settings so you get those options I'm going to check dynamic topology hit OK uh, that's uh, an irrelevant warning at the moment turn up your brush size and then switch to your tablet if you have one if not um, I don't I think you'll probably survive without one during this tutorial so now I'm just gonna go ahead and begin smoothing my cube down so just go ahead and begin sculpting to sculpt on the surface you're just going to hold down your pen or your mouse and uh, click and drag and that's gonna sculpt and then to smooth out an area, if you were to like bulge that way out accidentally for some reason, you can hold down shift and go over it and it will smooth back out. Make sure that you're constantly orbiting around your object, especially in 3D software, it's hard to tell how far something is protruding out or you know, how far it's dented in. And it's just really good to always, always be moving around it so you can see what's going on. In any case, you get the idea. You can also use your numpad keys, one, three, and seven, to get the various views, um, and you can use shortcuts. So G is the grab tool, and then if I wanna switch back to my draw tool, I think that's um, X. I didn't actually know that. So one other tool that I'd like to show you is this snake hook tool. Um, I just began using it. Essentially with the move tool, you're going to be able to move your geometry, um, grab it and pull it. However, with the snake hook tool, you are going to be able to grab and drag and then continue moving it um, because it creates new geometry as you're moving it. Another thing to notice is if you go back into object mode, your dynamic topology will be turned off. So you'll have to turn it on every single time. So just keep that in mind. Just remember when sculpting to take your time with the low resolution mesh. Under dynamic topology, you're gonna to notice there's this detail size. The higher you set this, the less detail you're gonna have. So I would just leave it at 12 until you have your model looking exactly the way you want it, and then go ahead and begin setting it down. So if I set it to eight, then when I'm up close like this, I'll have more detail. If I set it to two, for instance, I'll have a lot of detail applied. And uh, it's really applied based on distance of camera from the mesh. So. Um, just be careful to not accidentally, um, when you're far away, click on the mesh because that'll instantly destroy the resolution. As you can see, it's destroyed the resolution for the mouth. Kind of annoying, it's just the way it is. Um, just make sure to uh, not accidentally you know, zoom out and destroy your mesh. All right, so here is my face, uh, the final sculpt. I think the face is actually a little big for the head, so I'm just increasing the size of the head, and hopefully that looks a little better. Okay, well, that's pretty horrifying. Sculpt mode is a pretty powerful tool, and it's something that I would definitely recommend getting into. I know this tutorial was a little bit brief, but I just wanted to quickly go over sculpt mode so that you could get the general idea and uh, then we can move on. I do recommend you play around with it and get to know sculpt mode at least as well as you know edit mode right now, because it's going to be really useful in the future. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. This is Iridesium.